Hey, what's up guys? How y'all doing today? Well, baby, if your name is Jennifer Lopez, it has not been a good week. People are saying that Shine is ready to say he wants his record expunged. People are saying that J-Lo is helping Diddy out financially because she don't want the blowback on her. Baby, but the worst part is J-Lo is being dragged on TikTok. Why? If you guys don't know, J-Lo went on this onslaught against TikTok creators because she wanted them to keep her name out their mouth. Now, she tried to say it was because of her whole old movie, that flop that happened a couple weeks ago, but that didn't really make sense. But what does make sense, if you believe what the streets are saying, is the fact that J-Lo tried to get prominent TikTokers' accounts pulled down because she wanted them to be scared to talk about her before all this stuff with the Diddy case, possible federal indictment, and all this stuff comes down. <laughs> Baby, you know we keep you late and breaking, not just on the criminal stuff or potentially criminal, alleged criminal stuff, but also on the way J-Lo is being dragged on TikTok right now. And we got some of the best TikToks for you to listen to. Listen, let's get into this realm because by the end of the thing, you're going to remember something really important. Remember that J-Lo used to be so unlikable that she was sent to a special camp after she became famous, I believe after Ben uh, Affleck dumped her, to find a way to be more likable and not come across as an a-hole to the people that she worked with, to the people that she met. And baby, it was working for a while. But baby, even though Diddy might have made her career, it seems like he might have also sunk it as well because everybody close to Diddy is catching some heat. Anyway, let's get into these TikToks and then meet me after the jump because baby, I want to know what y'all think. Let's get into this. Let's I have a J-Lo story. The year is 2019 and I'm dancing with Jennifer Lopez in the 2019 Grammys. And she was asked to do the Motown tribute and she said yes. As we all know, Motown is a record label, is black owned a home to the most iconic artists in history, Diana Ross, the Supremes, uh, The Temptations. Like, come on now, we know what's going on. I had worked with her previously before. Uh, I did a music video of her, couple performances, I think Billboard Awards, some other stuff too, which, you know. Uh, I, I, it, it was cool, whatever. I was just very shocked she was going to do a Motown tribute at the Grammys, which is a award show for music. I walk into rehearsal on the first day. Here was the first red flag for me. I walk into rehearsal the first day to the Motown tribute rehearsal. There was only three black people, including myself. Everybody else in the room was white or other, you know, Hispanic, but there was three black people in the room and that was the dancers. Okay, we're, we move on, we press on. I'm noticing that even when we're doing formations, like we're, we're being placed on stage, I'm talking about us as far as the black dancers, we're being pushed away from the center which is where she is i remember this like i really remember this moment it was me and the other black dancer that were opposites we were right it was her in the middle and then it was us two she said they have to move they have to move okay we move past that we move past that right we move past that we probably now into like the third or fourth day of rehearsal right and that article came out saying you know why is j-lo doing the motown tribute like i don't know if y'all remember that but an article came out saying i think it was like variety but somebody something big a publication came out asking why she's doing it the, the team sat us down and they were like i know you guys are seeing some negative press and blah blah blah, blah. Child, she gonna walk in some us y'all know what we're gonna show him why I'm doing it. I remember she like r raised her. <laughs> I was dying. I was dying. I didn't know what was going on. I was so confused. I was so, so confused. Press on. That day of rehearsal was like actually easier. So like, I was just like chilling. At this point, y'all, I'm here. I'm doing my job. That's what I'm doing. Break for lunch, right? My hair at that time looked like this. So I'm there with the choreographer at lunch. We're all talking. I think Jennifer's there. She's talking to us too, actually kind of being funny or whatever. And literally looks at me dead in my face. She goes, so what are we going to do with your hair? Oh, yeah, girl, I get it. Listen, I get it. Is my hair Motown? No. Ain't nothing about this performance Motown. Ain't no Mo, ain't no town in here. Hi, I just want to take a brief intermission from the story to remind everybody that there was a salsa breakdown. A salsa breakdown. But you worried about my braids. Also, I want to be very honest, like, let's be clear. I was, it was 2019. I was really in my professional dancer bag. I was trying to dance behind artists and do the things. So I'm happy that that happened when it did, because if it was 2024, 
I went to my friend who's a hairstylist. Shout out to Tiger Bomb. He's the best hairstylist in the world. I love him so much. He basically gave me like a custom like Motown look because I was so scared. I was like, I'm gonna get fired. Like, I don't know what to do. So Tiger ends up giving me this look which I ended up loving, so shout out to Tiger. What really gagged me is I'm over here thinking like everybody's gonna be doing like a Motown, like a vibe, like, uh, but again, I'm, I remember what I said, there's only three black people. So I'm trying to think, what's everybody else gonna do? Child, look at what they was doing. And what really sucks is like the black dancers that were on the job were like phenomenal. Like, I'm not gonna put nobody's name out there, but like the female dancer that was in the female section with all white and other females like she was whooping ass like eating those steps pushed out pushed to the side push push push, push. honestly it was a line she was all the way at the end and i remember sitting on the side and being like but not only like forget the fact that she's black she's eating and let's not forget the fact that she's black it's a motel tribute so yeah child that's the last time yenny from the block got any of my time my energy and you know ham and cheese on a roll with a bag of chips and an orange drink if you know you know since everybody's talking about jennifer lopez and this clip i thought i would also share my childhood trauma involving meeting this woman for the first time on the block i'm gonna give you some brief background information about where the block is and my story just so you know what's going on so fun fact about me i used to go to the school that jlo's mother taught at and that jlo herself attended it was holy family school in the bronx and notice how i said was i'll get back to that later i was not present when jlo's mom was there she like just retired and i believe the reason why she retired was because she won 2.4 million dollars in a lottery and she was like bye which is completely understandable I also went to the same pizza place she would go to, Cross Bronx Pizza, because it was like just down the block. And I also went to the same after school program that she went to, the Kips Bay uh, Boys and Girls Club. Went for like a couple months and I didn't like it, but that's another whatever. And as you can see here, the pizza place, the school, and the Boys and Girls Club are all on Castle Hill Avenue in the Bronx. And this is what I think she refers to as the block. Now on to the main event. It is 2002, if I remember correctly, around the winter time, leaving school, it's dismissal time. I'm walking down the stairs and I notice a huge crowd and I'm like, what's going on? I did not know who Jennifer Lopez was. I was kind of a nerdy child and the music phase didn't really hit me until about the eighth grade. But from that day on, let's just say I knew who JLo was. So I make my way finally to the first floor and as I turn the corner, I just see kids getting pushed, like hunted into the building get back in the building by these two big men who are obviously bodyguards i didn't know that next thing you know i'm getting pushed also into the floor and i like fell next to the staircase and i'm just like what is what is happening and that's when i catch a glimpse of this woman like not acknowledging anything that's happening she's walking between her bodyguards and then she's out the door flash forward a couple of minutes after my concussion subsided and i picked up all of my belongings i made my way out of the front door of the school over here and i wanted to go to my favorite pizza place down the street because I had 50 cents and I knew a pizza roll would help me forget about this whole thing. But then I noticed the large crowd outside and I was like, it's never that busy there. And then I realized that woman was probably inside of the establishment. So I was like, forget this. I'm going to get on the city bus and go to my aunt's house. And that's when my aunt and my cousins told me that that woman was Jennifer Lopez. So I actually found this article from 2002 and even back then people were saying that she's a phony and a fake and doesn't do anything for the block. Kind of freaking out because this article is about that day. Look, she visited Holy Family School for the cameras <laughs> and then she went to La Crosse Bronx Pizza Shop. <laughs> here it is, here it is. Bodyguard shoved excited kids out of the way, residents said, leaving one tiny fan in tears. See, I wasn't lying about anything. <laughs> And the reason why I said was Holy Family School is because the school is gone now. As of last year, it had to close its doors. And look, am I saying that JLo should be required to donate money to all the places that she grew up with? No, but when you make it your whole personality that you grew up from the Bronx and you went to the school and how you loved going to this pizza place or that dance studio and you don't give no money to any of these places, but it's your whole personality. It's kind of weird. Story time. Let's talk about the time I met JLo. So if I had to guess the year, I think it was 2015. At the time, I was working for Kohl's, which is where she had her Jennifer Lopez collection brand. I was fairly new to the team, probably hadn't even been there a month or two months as yet, and there were two other technical designers on the team. Just to preface, we were doing real numbers on this brand. At the time, Kohl's was worth about $20 billion, a fun fact that most people don't know. 
So one day the CEO of the company comes in, not the CEO, it was the VP, I want to say. The VP of the company comes in and he's like, oh my gosh, since you're doing so well, J-Lo wants to meet the team. I'm from Brooklyn, so I'm kind of indifferent to a lot. So I was like, okay. He lets us know that she's going to come the next day and it's going to be like sort of a motivational speech that she's going to give the team and just like a pat on the back for a job well done. The next day we all came in. I was always dressed and impressed, so I didn't do anything extra special or anything like that. But yeah, we were waiting for her to arrive, and in true celebrity fashion, she showed up hours late. I think she was supposed to come in the morning, and she didn't get there till almost the end of the workday. They have the entire JLo team in the conference room, and she walks in with Benny Medina, and she kind of has like a stank look on her face. So the VP at the time, Arthur Lewis, this is his picture, and he's gone on to do great things, by the way. Um, Arthur is like beaming because he's so excited about this motivational speech that she's about to give his team. Benny Medina has everyone introduce themselves, so we all go around the room and everybody says their name and what they do. The entire time, j is just kind of like nodding her head like, mm, and she's not really saying much. After an awkward period of silence, she ends up asking, so who works on FIT? Myself and the other two TDs raise our hands and we're kind of looking like, well, what's going on? La Lopez opens her mouth, but honey, it wasn't for anybody's motivation. She ends up saying, I know they say the fit is good, but I don't think it is, and we need to work on that. If I had to sum up Benny Medina and Arthur's facial expressions, this photo would be it. I just smirked it to myself because I'm like, child, I know this lady ain't talking to me. Mm -mm. She goes on to say that she's tried on some of the stuff her friends and family have tried it on too, and it's just not working for her. Mind you, we're pulling in tens of millions of dollars a week. I actually thought it was funny, but at this point, Benny Medina is trying to reel her in, honey, and that thing is waving her hands like, I, 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 I said what I said. We got to work on the fit. I took it with a grain of salt because I had just gotten to the team, so I'm like, you probably don't have any of my product on the floor. And me being me, I'm like, I know she's not talking about me or my work. I am fantastic at what I do. Just saying. All of that to say, while the team didn't like or agree with what she said, I do think it was cool that she stood her ground and she didn't let Benny Medina or Arthur kind of sway what she had to say. She was a woman, she was using her voice, we just didn't agree with that woman or that voice, just saying. Months later, some of the products I actually had in progress hit the store and I got word back that she loved the fit of one of my jumpsuits so much she ended up wearing it in an ad. I told y'all that lady wasn't talking about me. <laughs> I met her a second time, so let me know if this story warrants a part two. I'm Nikki and I'm your FedEx for Bestie. Like, follow, share for more. Bye. All right, we're jumping on the train. This is me meeting J-Lo in 2009, and it's one of my top five not fun celebrity interactions. You can see in my hand that I'm holding a Selena DVD, which I brought for her to sign, thinking like maybe she'll think it's funny or like, I don't know, make some smart comment, whatever. But one, when she got there, she came with her own photography crew, lighting everything. We were not allowed to have our cell phones out or anything to take photos with her or of her. At the time, I was an intern at the radio station. Her team told us that any photos that they took, they were going to email to the station and we could then use those. Fine, fine, fine. Most of the women waited in line to meet her because the DJs were going to meet her separately. So everybody else was like predominantly girls from what I can remember. And I go up to her, I'm like smiling all red, like she could tell I was nervous. She barely even like looked at me, said nothing, grabbed the DVD, signed it, like put her arm around me like she was like not really trying to like touch me touch me and that was it she literally said nothing to me and she was kind of like that with the rest of the line but then when the DJs came out were mostly males and obviously are like in charge of playing her music it was like she came alive <laughs> she was happy bubbly talkative like a totally different person I could overhear everything because I was in an office nearby and I was kind of bummed as a Latina I would love to have had an amazing experience with her but at least I got a signed Selena DVD, right? You guys know this little bit of a JLo hate account. <laughs> Don't come for me. I'm Puerto Rican and I think she's fake as fuck. Here's a prime example. Tell me why JLo posted this video of her advertising and promoting skincare products with damn filters on her face. And this is a video that she did not post where you could clearly see all her wrinkles. Now JLo's like in her 50s, Miss Ma'am. We can see you're using filters. Let me show you a clip of the video. Sometimes I like to just take the JLo Beauty sunscreen, add a little bit of our booster to it like that, toast the edges. Does she think we can't tell? Does she think we don't know what filters are? Don't worry, you guys. The comments were calling her out. Why do you have so many filters? This is false advertisement, JLo. Do it without filters. Filter queen. Had to see, hard to see past the filter. I had no idea who this was for a good 20 seconds, even after checking that it was from JLo's page. I don't think I ever seen her so fresh faced. No shade, but that's some good filter. Like, girl, 